Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to share with you my fragrances of the week. But before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that button. Join the weird and wonderful family. I would love to have you part of the community. And so would everybody else. We are a fun bunch. I got like a couple compliments this week. Do you know how amazing that is? Like I will go months without receiving a compliment. Maybe because I'm not close enough to people or maybe because I don't wear enough fragrance, but it'll be a long time between uh, being told I smell good. I got two compliments this week. So I was so pumped. You know how there's some people and like, okay, fine, if that's the way you feel. <laughs> but they're like, I don't care if I get compliments. I just wear the fragrances for me. Well, yeah, of course, of course we wear the fragrances for me, but I love getting compliments. It means I smell good. It makes me feel happy. It makes me feel nice. So yeah, uh, if I get a compliment, I'm really pumped about it and I get excited about wearing it more and more. So anyway, I've got a few of those for you to, today and let's get started. First fragrance, I didn't get complimented on this one, was Marc Jacobs Decadence. Now, first of all, it was kind of a mistake to wear uh, because it's, it's a pretty potent fragrance and it is kind of warmer, but it's still, it, it was rainy and cold. So I just was in the mood for something kind of vanilla. -like, and I thought, well, a green vanilla would be great. It was nice. Like I actually really enjoy this fragrance. I, when I first smelt it, I just couldn't stand it at all. Like I just thought it was disgusting. In fact, you know, when you smell something and your lip kind of curls, like you can kind of can feel it. It's almost involuntary and it kind of comes up on the corners and you just can't help, you kind of do this. That's how I felt when I first smelt uh, Marc Jacobs Decadence. Not only that, but I think the bottle is the ugliest bottle ever. Like I am not a fan of this. I know some people find it really cute, but I got it for 20 bucks at my Shoppers Drug Mart. So I had to get it because $20, like, come on, you can't beat that. Marc Jacobs Decadence has plum saffron and iris in the opening. And then in the mid, it has orris, jasmine, sandback, and rose. The base has liquid sambar, uh, papyrus, and vetiver. Bizarrely, this has no vanilla, but that's what it gives me. So to me, it's just a green vanilla. It reminds me of every green vanilla I've smelt. So it reminds me of Lalique's Le Parfum, uh, very similar to that somehow. Uh, it also reminds me a little bit of Aura from Moogler, although Aura is a lot more uh, green and menthol. Uh, menthol -y. I I wish I could find a bottle of it because I'm very curious about it. I feel like my my uh, fragrance tastes have developed, so I actually think I'd like Aura. Now I do really enjoy this. It just wasn't the right fragrance on the right day. Does that ever happen to you guys where, you know, you, you're, oh, what should I wear? What should I wear? So you put something on and then it's just not the right thing and you're kind of like, eh, all day. I hate when that happens. I like it when a fragrance is just perfect, suits my mood. But this one, this one was a fail for me. Although I do like the fragrance. It's kind of deep, a little bit smoky. Uh, you know, there's that plum in there. Although for the most part, I get a green vanilla. So tell me what you get in this one, if you have it and if you love it or hate it. I know this one is major polarizing. Next fragrance I tried was Gris Charnel by BDK. Now this fragrance to me is kind of, it's a little bit clean, a little bit soapy, um, and a little bit smoky. I actually really love this. I love the smoke factor in this and the fact that it's called Gris, uh, Gris Charnel, um, and the, even the color of the juice is kind of almost gray. I love that. I love the fact that the color kind of represents the the smell of the fragrance. Uh, so overall, I love the smell of this fragrance. So I love the little bit of smokiness. It feels hazy. It feels almost like a smoky fog or you know how smoke just kind of wisps around. That's how this fragrance is. So from that perspective, I love the scent profile. I love kind of that cleanness with that little bit of smoke. I find this one sensual yet classy. Uh, it's a fragrance that I can see being worn in the day or the night, quite sexy. 
The problem with this one for me is the longevity. So uh, I put it on my skin, maybe I go anosmic to it, but it only lasts about three hours for max. As, as a projector, I would say maybe I get an hour out of it. So I wanna wear this and go out and about and really spray myself with it to see if anyone can smell me. I find the longevity poor, but who knows, maybe others can smell me. I've had that happen where I can't smell it anymore, but people around me can smell it. But that said, this is a gorgeous fragrance. I just can't justify the price at this point because of that longevity, but we'll see. Yeah, I really, really enjoy this. I just find it to be, it would be an easy reach. I can see this being a signature scent for someone. Uh, it's really classy and sophisticated, yet sexy, slightly smoky. So love it. Don't want to buy it because of the longevity. Now the next fragrance I wore was Love by Sofia Vergara. I've talked about this one a ton. I just think this one is such a beautiful fragrance and so, so affordable. So this one has passion fruit, orange blossom, green apple, and mandarin in the opening. The middle notes have Colombian coffee, orchid, coffee blossom, orris, and magnolia. And the base has uh, praline, vanilla, amberwood, and musk mallow. So this one, you get that little bit uh, of a fruity opening. It comes across to me a little bit, a little bit blackberry-ish. I don't know if it's just the fruits mixing with the coffee and the praline, uh, but somehow it smells a little bit darker than what I anticipate at, you know, passion fruit and apple to smell like. Uh, that said, I just love this fragrance. It's juicy, it's fun, it's not complicated, it smells good, you can douse yourself in it. You guys have commented and many have said that you get tons of compliments uh, when you wear this fragrance. So to me, it's a great fragrance, decent longevity because the price is so great. So check out Sophia Love. This is a fragrance that although it's technically a little bit more uh, darker can be worn all year round as far as I'm concerned. Next fragrance, and this one I did get a compliment on, was Angel Nova. Now, it's so crazy because I'm kind of on the fence about this fragrance. I love raspberry, and so I was so excited to get this. And seriously, when I first smell it, I love that raspberry. It smells fresh. There's a bit of tartness in it. This has raspberry and lychee. I know that there's rose in this one as well and Akigala wood. So it's a super fresh, happy fragrance. The issue that I have is with that Akigala wood. So some people have said that Akigala wood, although some people say it's oud, is actually a synthetic form of patchouli. I get the patchouli for sure. Doesn't smell overly like oud to me. Uh, but the, the, it, it gets really strong. So that woody component to Angel Nova really comes to play on my skin. That said, I put it on with kind of a sweeter lotion and then I, I put on quite a lot of this and I went, uh, I went to a store, I was chatting with the salesperson and it wasn't like, like there was a counter in between us. So um, it's not like we were super close and she goes, by the way, you smell fantastic. And I'm like, okay, Angel Nova, you're not going anywhere because you're awesome. So got a compliment with this one. It encouraged me to want to wear it more. At first I'm like, oh, I wonder if people will like this. Uh, like I said, I love that raspberry lychee combination. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm I still on the fence with this one. I honestly think like you can wear this one in the summer in the serious heat, like we have cooler weather. Uh, I am living in, you know, kind of mid to Northern Canada. So we have cooler weather all year round. We get up to about 30, uh, 35 max here in Edmonton uh, Celsius. So this, I can probably pull it off most days. I would probably not wear it past about 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, I can see this one being a fantastic fruity fragrance for the winter. And this thing really, really lasts. So, you know, I'm gonna get all day with this fragrance. So that, that makes it kind of worth it too. Also, this is the EDP, not the EDT. I haven't tried the EDT yet, but I want to, because uh, I think maybe it would be a little bit more palatable. Anyway, this one, decent, got me a compliment, can't complain. 
Next fragrance is my beloved Scandal à Paris by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now, um, this one, uh, I just love it. Like, I love this fragrance. I'm going to be rocking, the, like, like, I'm going to have, like, I bought this last summer. I'm sure I'm going to finish it this summer. Um, I love this fragrance. It's got honey. I believe there's jasmine in here and then uh, also pear in the opening. So it smells like kind of a fresher pear. It balances out the thickness or the, you know, kind of stickiness of honey uh, and also kind of just brightens the jasmine in this. If you found Scandale to be a little too much for you, try the Scandale à Paris because um, it's a lot more light and fresh. I just think this is beautiful. It always puts me in a good mood when I put it on, but I also feel just a little bit saucy with it on, so try this one. And if you have tried it, tell me what you think. The only thing that I'm really disappointed in uh, is that I thought that this was a metal plate and it isn't and the Scandal at Perry has completely worn off so you can't even see the name. I think it just said Scandal there um, but it's totally completely worn off so that's a little disappointing. Uh, that said, yeah, this uh, is always going to be in my collection. Next fragrance I tried was Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel and this was another one that I got compliments. I can't believe it! I got compliments two times in one week. Like seriously, it's amazing. So this is a keeper. Now I love Coco Mademoiselle. You guys know how much I love this fragrance. To me, like I'm not going to go over the notes because I've talked about it so much, but it's refreshing but relaxing at the same time. There's a slight sweetness to this one. It's perfectly balanced in my opinion and what's so amazing about Coco Mademoiselle is that it lasts all day. It's got citrus in it and I smell that citrus throughout the whole entire wear of the perfume. So 10 to 12 hours I'm smelling just a slight sweet orange slash bergamot in this one. Um, I absolutely love it. I find it classy, sophisticated, elegant. It's just a gorgeous fragrance. I love the iconic bottle. I want to try next either Coco or Coco Noir. I've been testing out those two, uh, but I definitely love having the Chanel iconic bottle in my collection and I just plain love wearing this. And now that I got a compliment, man, I am happy. <laughs> Last fragrance I tried was Akusina by Avatim. Now I have talked about Gigi by Avatim uh, and thought I would give this one a try. Now this is from a Brazilian perfume house uh, and unfortunately we can't get these fragrances in uh, North America that I know of at least yet. So um, yeah, that's unfortunate. This is, uh, you can get it I believe in South America but not here. So I really enjoy this fragrance. It's refreshing. Uh, for me, there's a, a slight aquatic uh, nature to this fragrance, although it's considered uh, more of a white floral. Uh, it opens with pear and cassis, so I am a huge fan of both those notes. Love them in my fragrances. Pear is just one of my favorite notes to wear in the summer. Pear and raspberry. Um, so this is just a bright, fresh, uh, kind of lighter white fruit smell. In the middle it has jasmine, orange blossom, and narcissus. Um, so again, like just kind of white florals. The base has hazelnut, musk, and sandalwood. I don't really notice any hazelnut, um, but I do, 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 I do notice the musk. So this comes across as kind of a pear white floral uh, with a dry down of, of a bit of musk. It's juicy, it's delicious, it's sophisticated, uh, it's an easy reach. Like I can see this being a signature scent for someone. Um, it's just, it's beautiful. Now the longevity, not so great. Like I think I got four to five hours with it. It would be in the same sort of category as Elie Sable Parfum White. So white has a peach note in it with the white florals. Elie Sab uh, Le Parfum White um, has more orange blossom. Uh, rather, th this one just kind of smells like uh, just a, a really beautiful white floral. I think I prefer Acusina over um, Elie Sab Le Parfum White, but if you have that one, that's what this one is kind of in the same category 
as, in my opinion anyway. So this one is beautiful. I hope that Avatim actually starts shipping uh, internationally. This one I really am impressed with. So for all of you that are in South America, you're really lucky to have this perfume house. And I hope they come uh, to the rest of the world soon. So that is it for the week. I got two compliments and I'm not upset about that. Not at all. Compliments came from these two fragrances. I can't believe it. I got some compliments and I am not upset about that. I really like when I get compliments on my fragrances. So it was a happy week for me. What about you? What was your favorite fragrance for this week? And did you get any compliments? And if you did, tell us what fragrance you were wearing. I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.